thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm privileged to be able to offer a few comments from the Scottish Green Party at this, uh, this moment. And I, over the last wee while, I've heard both the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister reflect on how they might have felt back in their early days as teenage activists if they had known the role that they would go on to play in uh, providing the role of leaders of government for Scotland. But my first memory of meeting Nicola Sturgeon years before I stood for Parliament myself was when she was providing opposition, not government. And I'm sure there were times when opposition meant saying no, but in the first year of this new Scottish Parliament, with the rights and equality of a marginalised group on the line, Nicola Sturgeon recognised that when the government does the right thing, the role of opposition involves being constructive. And in the uh, that the law most often called Section 28. It was a nasty homophobic hangover of the 1980s. And in the first debate about repealing that law, Nicola Sturgeon said Section 28 is plainly and simply about discrimination. It is about singling out one section of the population and labelling it as unacceptable. Now, she was not the only politician saying so. But what she did helped to ensure that that issue was not seen as government versus opposition, and that rival parties with serious disagreements could work between them to find the common ground and work together for the good of the country. Now, I've agreed and disagreed with Nicola Sturgeon on issues over the years since then, but in recent months, she has shown that same commitment to stand by another vulnerable group in our society, while so many in politics and in the media were dredging up the tropes and prejudice of past decades and redirecting them against transgender people. So I can still see today what I remember from those days. Nicola Sturgeon's commitment to be an ally to marginalised people remains part of her character as a politician. Now, as I say, I didn't know at that time that I would go on to join the Scottish Parliament, or indeed that I would have the chance to sit with Nicola Sturgeon on the advisory board of the Yes Scotland campaign for Scottish independence, or even that I would share the stage uh, with her at the Glasgow Hydro of all places, even if we did have to share the bell with a, a certain Mr George Galloway. I certainly couldn't have imagined that she and John Swinney would pick up the phone and offer to negotiate an agreement which would bring the Greens into government for the first time in this country's history, advancing action on climate justice and progressive values, and in doing so, infuriating right-wingers, vested interests, polluting industries, and even one or two of their own backbenchers. <laughs> so I also see today what I remember from earlier days, that Nicola Sturgeon sees the value in politicians and political parties recognising their differences but seeking common ground and finding ways to work together for the good of the country. Presiding officer, on this day of national reflection, we all share the sentiment Nicola Sturgeon expressed a few minutes ago. And as for the things that her time as First Minister will be remembered for outside of the political bubble, I think for most people it will be her leadership during a pandemic that changed all of our lives. At the start, as we were just coming to terms with what the world was facing, some governments around the world chose bluff and bluster, pretending they knew the answers or offering false simplicity in place of the complex truth. Nicola Sturgeon made a braver choice to be clear about what wasn't known and to express the same fears and uncertainty that we all felt. Throughout the pandemic, she not only fronted up the Scottish Government response on an almost daily basis, but she did so with honesty, clarity and humility. And by doing that, she earned the public trust. So, Presiding Officer, whatever the future brings, uh, I thank both Nicola Sturgeon and John Swinney for their service to Scotland. I wish them very well, and my highest hope for them is that they continue to find ways to infuriate all the right people.